Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers anonymous tips, concealing identity, and securing residences, and is brought to us by Joel Martinez's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. In a video posted on September 14th, 2023, Officer Pirtle of the New Mexico State University Police Department responded to an anonymous call alleging that 19-year-old student Joel Martinez had carried a case of beer into his dorm room in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mexico. Shortly after Officer Pirtle knocked on the dorm room door, Mr. Martinez began to film the encounter. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I can help you. Is there anyone else in here? Uh, no, it's just me. Okay. You mind just opening the door? That way I can see. Uh, you sure. trying to... What are you trying to look for? I just want to make sure there's no one else in there. To well, start, and then I'll talk to you at well, no, There's no one in there right now. Okay. All right. Come out here and talk to me, though. Yeah. So I'm going to be honest with you. So we got a report that you were seen walking into your dorm with alcohol. Okay. So is there alcohol in there? Uh, I don't answer questions. What's your name and your badge number? Officer Pirtle, NMSU Police. You have an ID with you? Uh, I do. Okay, can I see it? Uh, you suspect me of a crime? I do. Okay, what crime and how can you articulate it? Minor in possession of alcohol. We got a report that you were walked in. So it's like no. here that they say, they said thing? It's like they said that he has? And that that's how you're going to articulate it? So we don't have to go down this route. If you wanna, If you want to go down this route, we can. Well, I really don't, but like you're, I'm studying right now. I'm doing okay. homework. Get okay, knocked on my door. I'm out here. I want to know what's on. You say that they, they said that there's alcohol in this room. How can you articulate it though? Okay, so that's why I'm here talking to you. Yeah. Okay, so I still need to ID you. Uh, no. And then we need to go from there. You have to, or you have to suspect me of a crime. I, I do. You, you're, you realize that uh, cops in New Mexico don't have qualified immunity, right? I do that. I do. Okay, that. so from, from here on, just let's just be careful in the, the, what you are about to do right now. Okay. But you're saying that you want my ID, but right now you're not. You or yourself can articulate a crime that I've committed. Okay. So. So I already explained to you why I'm here. Why okay, I, need your I know. ID. I know what you're here, but okay. Is my ID gonna tell you if there's alcohol in that room? No, but I still need to identify you. My name is Joel. I need your first last name and your date of birth. No, you don't. I do. <laughs> If you don't want to provide that, you to don't me, want to call Officer Donovan or one of your supervisors here. Yeah, I can get a sergeant. Over All right, then like. calling up because right now, this is not what you want to do right now, because okay. this is a violation of my Fourth Amendment. Okay. All right. Let me okay. let me get a sergeant over here. Okay. Yeah. In refusing Officer Pirtle's requests for his identity, Mr. Martinez argues that the anonymous report of him bringing alcohol into the dorm room is insufficient to establish reasonable, articulable suspicion. In the 2000 case of Florida versus JL, the Supreme Court noted that, quote, unlike a tip from a known informant whose reputation can be assessed and who can be held responsible if her allegations turn out to be fabricated, an anonymous tip alone seldom demonstrates the informant's basis of knowledge or veracity. Nonetheless, the court also recognized that, quote, there are situations in which an anonymous tip suitably corroborated exhibits sufficient indicia of reliability to provide reasonable suspicion to make the investigatory stop. In the JL case, officers detained an individual they suspected of possessing a firearm based solely on an anonymous call alleging that an individual matching his description at a particular bus stop was carrying a gun. The Supreme Court ultimately concluded that the detention was unconstitutional because the anonymous call involved in the case did not give rise to reasonable suspicion, as the tip, now quoting, provided no no predictive information, and therefore left the police without means to test the informant's knowledge or credibility. And even though the caller had provided a description of the suspect, the court determined that, quote, an accurate description of a subject's readily observable location and appearance does not show that the tipster has knowledge of concealed criminal activity. The reasonable suspicion here at issue requires that a tip be reliable in its assertion of illegality, not just in its tendency to identify a determinate person. In the 2011 case of United States versus Chavez, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over New Mexico, noted that relevant factors when determining whether an anonymous tip exhibits sufficient indicia of reliability to provide reasonable suspicion to make an investigatory stop include, now quoting, whether the informant lacked quote-unquote true anonymity, i.e. whether the police knew some details about the informant or had means to discover them, whether the informant reported contemporaneous first-hand knowledge, whether the informant provided detailed information about the events observed, the informant's stated motivation for reporting the information, 
information and whether the police were able to corroborate information provided by the informant. It is unknown whether the anonymous caller provided any information regarding their identity or their motivation for making the report, and unclear how much detail was provided during the call. However, it does not seem that the officers were able to corroborate any information provided by the informant, aside perhaps from Mr. Martinez's appearance, which would support a conclusion that the tip was insufficient to establish reasonable suspicion. On the other hand, it does seem that the caller claimed to be reporting quote-unquote contemporaneous first-hand knowledge as they alleged that they witnessed Mr. Martinez enter the dorm room carrying a case of beer, which would weigh in favor of the reliability of the tip. Additionally, as the Court of Appeals of New Mexico explained in the 2003 case of State v. Contreras, quote, In New Mexico, a citizen informant is regarded as more reliable than a police informant or a crime stopper's informant, as everyday citizens presumably have nothing to gain by fabrication. Because we do not know precisely what information the anonymous caller provided, it is difficult to predict how a court would decide in this situation. Although Mr. Martinez would likely have a cognizable argument that the anonymous call alone did not furnish Officer Pirtle with the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain him. Okay. Yeah, that's my room. Oh, okay. You know, I just hang out out here then? Uh, is he detained? No, that's fine. I just don't want anyone else going you in can, the room. You could go in then. If, you're, if he's not detained, he's free to go. Yeah, he's free to go, but he can't go in the room. He can't? No, not at this time. They, someone so, called and said that they saw us uh, or me walk in there with a case of beer. But that's all they have, so. But it's an investigation. I'm talking to him. He doesn't want to identify himself. So there's a sergeant on the way that's going to talk to him until this gets figured out. I don't want anyone to go in the room. Uh, is anything going to happen if I don't identify myself? You can be arrested for concealing identity, yes. I want you to say, if you don't ID to me right now, if I don't give you my ID, that you're going to arrest me. I want you to okay. give me that ultimatum. Just hold on. You want to wait? You said you wanted to wait to speak to a supervisor, so let's just do that. Okay, okay then. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Stay there with him. Appreciate it. Okay. So right now we have minor in possession of alcohol, mm -hmm. possibly. And he asked me if anything's going to happen if he doesn't give me his name and date of birth. I told him that potentially you could be arrested for concealing identity if we want to go that route. Okay, I want you to give me that ultimatum right here, right now. And he said that you're aware, are you aware that MSU, or that New Mexico doesn't have qualified immunity? Yeah. So he went down that route, so I think that's what he's trying to get at. Hi. Hi. Name and badge number, please. Sergeant John Lovelace. My badge number is 212. 212. All right, thank you. Officer said here that if I don't ID, I will be subject to arrest. Is that true? It's possible, yes. Uh, possible, yes or no? I need, I need that ultimatum or else I won't get my ID. Okay, so technically right now, yes, you could be arrested. Could, I need a yes or no. Like, I need you to tell me if you don't give me your ID right now, I'm gonna arrest you. Why, why would I say that to you? Because right now you're asking. Yes. And I have the right to say no, because you're asking, you're not, it's not a lawful order. Okay. I need you to so make it a lawful you're order. you detained for suspicion of minor um, in possession of alcohol. Mm -hmm. We need to see your ID. Okay, and if not? And if not, you could be considered to could? explain identity. Because. New Mexico statute says that concealing of identity is a secondary charge. I would have to have been arrested or suspected of a crime. No, right now, you hear you just don't hearsay. Have to be arrested or suspected? You're being suspected of a having possession. On, on what? On what grounds? Okay. So, do you have any alcohol in your possession? I don't answer questions. On what grounds? What we are trying to do is we're trying to be cooperative with you and have you be cooperative with us mm -hmm. and help us clear this matter up. Okay. I gave him my name, Joel. Okay. What's your last name? You don't need my last name and you do not need my date of birth unless you want to run me for it, unless you want to run my name through your so system. You have, are you trying to run my name through the system? You have warrants for your arrest? Is are you, I don't answer questions. Concerned? I don't answer questions. I'm you asking questions. questions. I don't. It's my Fifth Amendment. Is it or is it not? So the other, the next the next step in this process would be, would you give us consent to check your room? Nope. To make sure that nope. you have no alcohol in your possession? Nope. I do not consent to any searches nor seizures. Okay. Very good. This is completely up to you how you want to play this. You could get a warrant? Or you get, so, or you, you have probable right costs. Now, Go right ahead. Right now, we do have reasonable suspicion that possibly a crime had been committed. Mm -hmm. We're trying to investigate that. Mm -hmm. You are certainly welcome to refuse if you wish. I know. But we need to ID you. If you do not present your identification, you can face a non-traffic citation. No, I need that ultimatum. I will give you my ID if you say that I'm going to go get arrested if I don't give it to you. So you'll give us if we say that? If you say that, yes, sir. Because that's already grounds for me to set up litigation against you. So you want us to threaten you? you. Want us to yes, threaten I want you to give me that ultimatum if you really want the ID. Threaten you. That's not how this is gonna Why? Happen. Because you know you can't. You know you can because you know that opens up for litigation. Oh, and to make this clear, I'm detained right now, right? 
Rick. Thank you. Are you Googling the laws right now? Because yeah. that's really what you should be doing right now. All right, cool. Are you okay with that? Yeah, continue reading. Are you sure you're okay with that? Yeah. I give you permission. Okay, so here's why we need your name and date of birth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read you the law because you are a law student, okay? Uh, Sean, can, can According to New Mexico, again? it's all being recorded. Yeah, I know, but my those body are cameras hard to running. Get. So I'm going I'm to use my, my own. So own. concealing identity consists of states. Okay, so your investigation is investigating okay. that I'm in possession of alcohol, right? That's exactly okay, what and we if said. Okay, and if I give you my ID, is that going to tell you if I do or do not have alcohol in that room? If or you, is it just a way if you to deny, find me with something? No. The ID is so that we can identify who we are talking to. If you wish to deny us access to that room, that is totally within your rights. I know. But you refusing to identify yourself to us by name and date, date of birth, birth, that is concealing identity. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so just tell me so that if I don't give you the ID, you're going to arrest me. Just okay. say it. Show us your ID. We need to see your ID. Or, or you will be arrested. Thank you. After Mr. Martinez repeatedly informs the officers he will not identify except under threat of arrest, Sergeant Lovelace tells Mr. Martinez that if he does not identify himself, he will be arrested for quote-unquote concealing identity. According to Section 30-22-3 of the New Mexico Statutes, quote, Concealing identity consists of concealing one's true name or identity with intent to obstruct the due execution of the law, or with intent to intimidate, hinder, or interrupt any public officer in a legal performance of his duty. The Court of Appeals of New Mexico concluded in the 1999 case of State versus Dawson that the statute, quote, requires a person to furnish identifying information immediately upon request, or, if the person has reasonable concerns about the validity of the request, so soon thereafter as not to cause any substantial inconvenience or expense to the police. However, in the 2021 case of State versus Aguilar, the Court of Appeals explained that the concealing identity statute is only applicable when officers have reasonable suspicion of criminal activity, because, under the Fourth Amendment, quote, proof of reasonable suspicion to question a defendant is required to establish that the officer was acting in the legal performance of his duty. And, now quoting again, unless the officer has reasonable suspicion to detain the suspect and question him about his identity, concealing one's identity is not a crime, and the individual is free to walk away. Therefore, if a court decided that the anonymous tip was insufficient to establish reasonable suspicion, it would almost certainly conclude that Mr. Martinez could not be convicted of concealing identity. You got that right? Yeah. Yeah, you got that. Pigs fool, for real. Why do you use that term? Because what the f are you searching my leg? We're not searching. No, your... that's a that's a that's a seize of my identification. Right. It's a seizure of my identification. Yes or no? We just need to see who you are in order to I go told you my name. investigation. My name is your first name. What is my Joel? Not the legal name or what? Joel, what? <laughs> he has my ID. Go look at it. Perfect. That's all we yeah. need. Thank you. Am I able to go in my room? No, not yet. Just hold up for just a minute, please, guys. Okay, so he's denying us for your consent to search. That's no, fine. That's fine. But yeah. we have him ID'd, so we're going to take her, make sure we take a report. We'll okay. get that here in just a minute. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, Joel. Yeah, yeah. Ourselves. Okay. Have a good day. You guys can go to your room. Thank okay. you. If we really wanted to push the issue, we could stop and lock the room down and get a, get a search warrant. Um, but we have an anonymous complaint. Yeah. So it's really kind of really kind of one of those things that's up in the air. We don't want to we don't want to do that. Sergeant Lovelace claims that the officers would be within their authority to lock the room down and obtain a search warrant to look for the beer. Under the Fourth Amendment, a search warrant cannot be issued without probable cause, and it seems unlikely that the officers would be able to obtain a warrant to search the dorm room in this situation. In the 2001 case of U.S. versus Tudor, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeal held that an anonymous call alleging that an individual was making pipe bombs in his garage and an ATF agent's corroboration of information the tipster provided about the suspect's appearance, residence, cars, and child were insufficient to furnish probable cause to issue a search warrant. In reaching this conclusion, the court noted that, quote, the anonymous tip standing alone provides virtually nothing from which one might conclude that the caller is either honest or his information reliable, and that, now quoting again, the minimal corroboration of innocent, readily observable facts was insufficient to establish the veracity or reliability of the caller, or to link Tudor with the allegation that he was making pipe bombs in his garage. As the officers in this situation only had suspicion based on the anonymous call, and they did not seem to be able to corroborate any predictive information, it is more likely that a court would conclude they did not have the probable cause necessary to secure a warrant. However, if they did have probable cause, they would likely be within their authority to lock the dorm room down and prevent entry while obtaining a warrant. In the 1980s, case of Segura 
Sierra versus United States, the Supreme Court concluded that, quote, securing a dwelling on the basis of probable cause to prevent the destruction or removal of evidence while a search warrant is being sought is not itself an unreasonable seizure of either the dwelling or its contents. Similarly, in the 2001 case of Illinois versus MacArthur, the Supreme Court determined that officers did not violate the Fourth Amendment by preventing a citizen from entering his home for two hours while securing a warrant when they had probable cause that the home contained illegal drugs, and had good reason to believe that if the citizen was permitted to enter the residence, he would destroy the drugs before the officers could return with their warrant. Accordingly, while the officers likely did not have probable cause to obtain a search warrant, if they did have probable cause, they would likely have the constitutional authority to prevent the students from entering their dorm room until a warrant could be obtained. Oh, wait, they're right here. <laughs> they're doing it, bro. Hi. Oh, they're right here. Uh -huh. just, okay, just listening. Two zero. Yeah, you're listening? Mm -hmm. All right, anything else I can help you guys with? We, we no, just so just going to stand around and get paid? Yeah, sure. He's going to stand around and get paid, brother? Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I think we can just prove some braces. I'm going to get complaints on both of your okay. And Chief Donovan is going to know about that because I'm, he knows who I am. Chief Donovan knows you. Chief Donovan knows who I am. Okay, very good. All right. So if we're not gonna we're not gonna argue with you. Have a nice day. Get the out of here. Well, okay, this yeah, is actually I'm a common area, so we're allowed to be. Yeah, go work. I pay you for something. Yes, I pay you for something. Get out of here, because you got my ID for no reason, brother. Oh, okay. Let's get the out of here. Have a nice day, sir. Thank you. Oh. After completing the interaction with Mr. Martinez, the officers left the dorm without any further incident. While it is uncertain whether Mr. Martinez filed a complaint with the New Mexico State University Police, he informed the officers that he would be speaking with Chief Donovan about the encounter. Additionally, although Mr. Martinez indicated several times during the interaction that he intended to file a lawsuit against the officers, as of the date of writing this episode, a complaint has yet to be filed. However, it would be fairly unusual for a lawsuit to be submitted so quickly after an encounter, and it is entirely possible that Mr. Mr. Martinez will be initiating legal action at a later date. Overall, the New Mexico State University officers get a B-, minus because although it is possible that a court could conclude their demand for Mr. Martinez's identity was not justified by reasonable suspicion, they mostly maintained a calm and professional demeanor, even when faced with disrespectful and condescending language from Mr. Martinez, and fully recognized Mr. Martinez's right to refuse a search of his dorm room. However, after realizing that their investigation of the anonymous tip did not yield sufficient evidence to make an arrest, I personally believe that the officer should have accepted Mr. Martinez's refusal to identify himself and moved on. Instead, they became preoccupied with obtaining his identification for their report, despite the limited probative value of that information. As Mr. Martinez pointed out, having his identification did nothing to help the officers determine whether or not there was alcohol in the dorm room, and by threatening to arrest him if he did not identify himself, the officers potentially ran afoul of the Fourth Amendment. Now, while the officers did exhibit some promising behavior, and I commend them for their poise and patience when dealing with Mr. Martinez's insults, I would also encourage them to rethink their reliance on compelled identifications in situations like these. Mr. Martinez gets an A for strongly asserting his constitutional rights by refusing to answer questions, denying the officer's consent to search his dorm room, and declining the officer's requests that he identify himself, while ultimately identifying himself once Sergeant Lovelace issued an order to do so. Although Mr. Martinez certainly could have been more respectful in some of his comments to the officers, he remained well within his First Amendment rights throughout the encounter, and was free to use his liberty to express his distaste for the officer's actions in the language he employed. That being said, in future encounters, I would suggest that Mr. Martinez keep in mind that reasonable suspicion is determined based on the facts known to the officer, and that officers are typically not required to articulate the basis of their reasonable suspicion to the individuals they detain. Accordingly, if a court determined that the officers in this situation had reasonable suspicion based on certain facts about the anonymous tip that were not shared with Mr. Martinez, it could also conclude that he was obligated to identify himself. On the whole, however, Mr. Martinez did an excellent job in defending his rights, particularly for someone of his age, and I encourage him to continue his legal studies. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.